Okay, maybe we're back. I think we're back. Okay, that's good. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen again. Not exactly sure what caused it. Probably zooming in on Z fighting wasn't helping. <laughs> uh, but I don't think that was the cause. So we'll just hope that doesn't happen again. I'm just gonna confirm myself that stream is working. Uh, looks like we're at least hopefully good. Um, so, that being said, maybe not. Wait. Um, are you able to see what's going on right now? Can I get confirmation on that? C Fusion 360. Okay, it should be working then. So, yep, okay, now I just was able to see it myself as well. So, uh, as I was saying, sorry about the sudden drop there. Uh, we can go ahead and make an extrude feature that includes all of this and instead of cutting in like we normally would we can instead make a new body here. What that does is it creates this weird glitzy looking thing um, but since we've created this body, we can now use it to create another body. So I'm going to open up the bias menu. You can see here, it calls that body 16. We're mixing it with body silver. <laughs> yeah, so this, this glitzy effect is called Z-fighting. Um, it literally means that on the Z, uh, so in, kind of in the direction, uh, it can't tell which material is right here. You can see even if I go over it, it's not it's not really able to tell what it should be selecting. Kind of just flickers. But that's fine for now because what we're going to do is we're going to use a union or combine. Going to select the large body. We're going to select that weird glitchy one. Instead of join, we're going to use intersect, which you can see yields us this little middle bit, and then we're going to keep the tool. And I think I've actually sucked these the wrong way around. So uh, I want to select the target body, which is this weird little shape here. The tool is this. And so you can see we are intersecting it. So what we're generating here is this blue area. But we're also keeping this yellow area. So when I hit OK, um, if it worked correctly, which it kind of looks like it didn't. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, yeah, oh, okay, just kept both of them. So now you can see we have, we have a few parts here. If I undo... Ah, right, okay, so we, right, we kept the body, which um, in this case isn't... So... What we've done is we've basically taken this little, the little rectangle, and we've removed the air part of this, but they're still intersecting. So what we can now do is select this body we've created, this one again, and instead we want to cut out this part from that one. So I'm going to do combine again, uh, and I'm going to select them in a specific order. So in this case, I want to select this piece in the middle we've created, so this body 16, uh, sorry, other way around, this, the body in the middle, and instead of intersect now, I want to cut away the material. So I'm cutting this part with this part, keeping tools, okay? And so now, although it's a little weird looking, uh, we now have basically taken the intersection between a rectangle and this surface. And so now we have a piece that, if I undo it, we basically have a, an area that where we've cut away and we've turned it into a new piece that sits on top. 
And so we can make that piece black and not, we don't want to use clear acrylic, we want to use something like ABS plastic. Um, or maybe not that ABS plastic. Something like, we'll go gloss, we'll go uh, matte black plastic. And then maybe turn up the glossiness a little bit. Apply that. And so now we have an area that we can print using a dark material. And so when we combine this area with those buttons, it kind of hides the fact that there's any gap at all. Makes them look more like one co one cohesive object. It's not perfect. I mean, you can see right there, since the buttons are raised, they kind of avoid that. And same with the roundedness. In fact, with that roundedness, I think we, can, we actually might want to change that. So if I hop into this sketch, the original one we made, we can actually fix that by going into here and doing a sketch chamfer, sorry, sketch fillet, by selecting the lines, like so. We can basically do the chamfer here. In this case, we don't want a very large chamfer. In fact, we want a very small chamfer. Um, I believe the chamfer is less than one millimeter in the original. Um, but I am going to double check that by bringing in the button. So if I bring in a button, uh, which one is this? Yellow here? Yeah, yellow. I zoom right down in on this. You can see this sketch chamfer we're creating. And it looks like it's actually closer to 0.75 is what we want. Um, so 0.75, uh, point, I'm not sure if these are all the same or not, but I hit enter on that, let's see. See we have, uh, oh, and it, yep, and so that's, that's what I thought would happen. Uh, the problem with sketch chamfers is that they tend to break relationships. And so rather than do this the typical way in doing a sketch chamfer normally, I'm actually going to just manually add the sketch chamfers. So I'm going to go in with the arc tool, draw it into one spot like this, connect it up, and let's see here. Well, actually, let, let's do this efficiently. Let's let's do this the smart way. And I think about I should I should be do, following good practices here. Um, so rather than that. Let's do this the kind of smart way. Instead, hop back two steps to this extrude, this glitchy extrude. Um, what we can do is, in, before we actually do those other operations, if I hide away this extrude and just have this rectangle here, I can fill it the edges of the rectangle. They're very hard to see because of how thin it is, but I should be able to click them right there. Right there, and right there. I'm going to chamfer those by 0.75. Just ever so slightly round those edges out. So now they have a little bit of a round. And if I go forward those two features that we had before, it should just deal with that. Yep, there it goes. Just dealt with it. So now if we bring back one of our buttons here, You can see that that chamfer matches the one we have here. Looks nice. And that chamfer may need to change for the physical one, uh, as I don't know the actual chamfer dimension on those buttons. But I think it looks quite nice. So really quick, before we go on to anything else, since we just finished this up, I would like to show what multi-material slicing looks like. Um, so I'm going to... Go ahead and use the Make tool to generate these geometries. I'm going to export those. And I'm going to actually rename this part. So we'll call it but 
an insert. I'm going to make that like so. And so now if we move over to a slicer that has multi-material set up, which Bruce Slicer does, let me move this so everything is visible on screen. For some reason, my computer thinks that this is a game. <laughs> there, there we go. So everything should be visible on screen now. Well, besides the button that I'm covering. So if we bring in this first model, it'll appear like normal, which is what we want. Um, <laughs> but to add this second model, if I was to just bring this in like usual, it's going to drop it underneath on the bed where it doesn't really make sense to have it. So instead, what I want to do is I want to right click on this model and do add part. Uh, and actually, let me make sure that insert's gone. There we go. Right click, add part, load, and then grab it from there. And you can see what it did is it actually brought it in in the exact same spot we had it in the CAD model. So you can't even see where the boundary is between them because they're exactly, they perfectly fit into each other. But what we can do now is I can set, uh, so I, I happen to remember, just remember this off the top of my head. Uh, the fourth spot in my printer is the gray, and I believe I have black loaded into the second spot. So I'm going to use a, a very, I'll use a very dark gray to represent black. And so I know it like, so extruder 2 is where my dark filament is, extruder 4 is where my gray filament is. And so what I can do is I, in this menu here, I can set the silver one to be silver on extruder 4 and this insert to be the dark on extruder 2. You can see it just colored those models appropriately. And I'm going to move this, so this is the purge tower. This is where the material is going to go that it needs to get rid of to purge the block. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this model over a little and make sure this purge tower is right there. And if I hit slice, you'll see that it slices very much like it normally would, with the exception that there will now be a purge tower right there up in the corner. In this case, these colors are, uh, there's a whole lot of the gray and then just a little bit of the black for like four layers, or six in this case. Um, and so for the vast majority of the print, it's just printing that silver as you'd expect, and it's just printing a uh, structural piece here. But once it hits that height where we need that dark color in, you can see this kind of back and forth happening over in the purge tower. And so what it's doing is every time it's switching colors, it's going, it's transitioning away and toward gray and black. And in fact, which really cool and doesn't really, so in this case we can't make use of this really, but I can turn it on so you can see what it would kind of look like, is one of the options within this in the multiple extruders is that I can change it so that, uh, where's the, um, oh they moved on me, where did they move it to? Let's see. Wipe options. Yeah, so if I add wipe options to the model, I can tell it to wipe into objects infill. And what that will do, as you can see here, if everything goes well, is that it is actually attempting to make use of these internal areas of the print to get rid of material it doesn't need. So you can see right here these like dark wiggly colors there because it's getting rid of the transition color into the infill of the object itself. Now in this circumstance, this is not very useful because the amount of infill, which is just these little lines here and here, is almost nothing compared to the amount of material we'd actually need to get rid of. 
But if we had an area that was much larger, this would be a significantly more practical thing to turn on. But, um, yeah, this is multi-material printing. So it, it's literally that easy. You just import both models, uh, assign them to different extruders with different colors, and hit go. Um, and it will print in multiple colors when it prints. Uh, provided your printer has multi-material. That's kind of the big caveat, is you have to have a printer that either has multiple nozzles or a way to switch materials mid-print. Um, in my case, I have a Prusa Mark III, uh, Mark III S Bear with a multi-material unit, so I can print up to five colors at once. <laughs> Yeah, I love 3D printing, and multi-material I rarely do. Uh, I really need to work with it more because I have the capability and lots of colors. But most people design things not to need the multiple colors of a, of a printer. Because most people don't have printers with multiple colors, uh, which is understandable. They're expensive and most of the time not too useful. But it is really nice for things like this where I want to just add a little bit of a decorative edge... Uh, make sure that it looks really clean, which it does when you do it this way. So, that out of the way. We can now move back to Fusion and get started on that other module. I'm going to save this. And so, what we want to do here is we have this module test snap. Um, as I've called it, which is maybe not the most descriptive name. But this is basically a generic module. This is what all of the other modules have been based on in my uh, models. And right now it's an isometric perspective. I have no, let me change that real quick. There we go, perspective with ortho faces. I do not know why it was set that way. So this is just a generic stand-in. Uh, all modules in Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes have this general shape. Um, but that is not true for needy modules. So if I bring up a... I bring up a screen... a uh, snapshot here. So we can see an example of a needy module. Uh, let's see. There should be a picture somewhere in here with one. Here we go. Oh, maybe that isn't the best example. Um, well, it'll work. So, you can see in this uh, screenshot of the game that all these modules have that same shape with a little cutout corner and a light in it, except for this module. This is a needy module. In game, they are darkly colored as opposed to the bright uh, silver of the other modules, which I've not determined yet how I'm going to manage to make that like lighter silver tint. Uh, I have some ideas. <laughs> but uh, they are a dark color they have these little banners along the sides. They're kind of like warning labels. Yep. Uh, thanks for throwing the link in there. And then they have that little two-digit display up here. It always... Uh, well, I think one of them might start from 48, but most of them start from about 45 seconds, and they count down to zero. Uh, and they do that periodically. Other features like this light, this knob, that all changes module to module just like any other module in the game, just like the button and the knobs and things like that are all different, but it still has this other shape. It doesn't have the LED in the corner, and it, has the, it doesn't have the tabs in the same position. So these all have two sets of tabs. This only has the three tabs, one on each side, and it does not have a tab on the top. So given that, uh, you might wonder how I would find out even what that looks like. Uh, the answer is, as usual, first thing to do is to actually go into the game. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of detail. Um, and so what I've done, 
a while back is I actually went through uh, all of the decompiled the game as best I could and went through to try to find any file that would be uh, useful. So some of these files were things like little tags. Um, some of these files that might be more familiar looking would be like, um, so maybe the memory module. There's like this whole little platform. The wires. There are these little things that the wires run between. And such a thing, in game, all of these are modular. They're these little pieces that would fit together to make up the graphic of the actual object. And so these themselves aren't terribly useful um, since they're not put together. There's lots of pieces missing from this. Um, but some of them are pretty solid. So as an example of one of the most detailed modules, um, I believe one of these is the entire, yes. So there is one, mo one uh, piece that actually makes up the entire visual exterior of the main case. So it's good. You can see all the little panels. You can see where each of the modules would go. You can realize that they are absolutely not straight lines. Um, <laughs> but this is a fairly useful module. Um, however, what we are interested in is actually the needy module. So if I, so as an example, the way I actually designed that original background was there is a piece that looks like this that is basically that component we've designed. Whoop, I was kind of blocking there. But this is, this is basically the same thing as this. Um, and it served as my reference when I was creating that. Because uh, it's always easier to work with a reference when you're creating a 3D model. So that, whoopsie, come back. Okay, it's not coming back. Give me a sec. Don't wiggle things on uh, on Windows. I always forget that wiggling does that. <laughs> but in, you can see how similar this model is. In fact, I basically modeled it over top of it uh, to make sure it was exactly the same. But we need to do that again because we need the other template. Uh, wait, there's my files. So we need to do that with the needy background, which looks like this. Very, very simple, actually, compared to the other ones. We do have to add some visual information, and there is some fancy things, like this is actually a chamfered edge. But that doesn't matter too much in the scheme of actually designing it. And I'm going to double check that we don't need anything else from this. So that's the timer. Strikes, background, custom case one, custom case two. Uh, by the way, custom case is what the game calls the uh, ca the case used in the menu to determine uh, custom scenarios. It's a pretty cool looking model, I'd actually say. Uh, it's one of my favorites, but doesn't really get much use in game. And ah, uh, yes, the LED, which looks like a little bump. Good advice, no wiggling. Yeah, I really wish it wasn't the case that Windows did that. Um, or that there was an, like, I, I think that is a way to disable it in the settings, but it is a little annoying that anytime you wiggle a window in Windows, it kind of just makes everything go away and may or may not make them come back. Um, but, okay, so we have our needy background here. This is what we'll be using as our reference. So here in Fusion, um, a lot of these features aren't needed now. Like a lot of this is not useful, um, going all the way back to way back at the beginning of the sketch. Um, you can see those, the geometry I used to lay it out. But even as far back as these sketches here, uh, like the the very like the second sketch I ever made in this module, is the something this complex. And that's not really helping us here. So what I'm pretty much going to do is I'm going to be designing it from scratch. Uh, but I'm going to do it in this same file. So I'm going to basically get rid of that body silver. I'm going to get rid of the bulb. But I'm going to keep this part. And the reason I'm keeping this is because I want it to be able to mount onto the same pieces that I'm using from before. 
it doesn't matter if it mounts into this exact piece. I probably will make a custom one because you can see there is that circular bit on the corner, which it really doesn't need because that is specific to... Oh, come on. There we go. It's specific to this being here, which is not the case on this other module. So that probably will change, but we will start modeling here. So what I need to do is I need to grab that file from before. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and import that file. So file, uh, and actually what I should be doing just in case, is I'm, I am going to make a copy of this. <laughs> uh, copy, and I'm going to copy it over there. Name it to be needy. And give it a moment to open. Hopefully we don't crash again. There we go. So I'm going to import that model as a boundary representation or as, as a surface basically. So insert, insert mesh, and I can now insert that mesh from the game. So keep talking, resources, models, case parts, and needy background. And I believe it is either very, very tiny or very, very large. It is very, very tiny. You can see it right there. Absolutely just super tiny. Um, so what I need to do is I need to rotate this 90 degrees. And then we're going to need to scale this up a lot. Um, so we're going to set to millimeter, which is going to make it small, but not very big. Um, then... We're actually going to have to leave it like that. So it's there. It is absolutely tiny. Can't even really see it. <laughs> um, is it facing the wrong way too? Uh, where, where's the top currently? Okay, no, it is facing the correct direction at least. I'm going to use the scale tool. Scale. I'm going to select it. like to select it. It does not want me to select it. I think I may actually have to edit or change modes here if I remember correctly. Uh, because meshes in Fusion do not act the way you might hope they do. Let's see if I can remember how this works. Um, I might have to convert this before I can mess with it. So if I come into here and I go, this is risky. We'll see if this um, is going to be a bit too bad of an idea. It's going to let me do this if I do that. Okay, it will let me now. So I'm going to scale this up by... See if 100 is too big? Nope, still still not big enough. Um, looks like we're getting close here. That is... close to the right size. In fact, I think that's almost borderlining the right size, but it's not quite right. I think it's close to 800 is the correct size. Um, yes, I believe 800% is the actual size used. So I do that, and I'm also going to need to move it into position. So move, and optimally I would move it to an exact location, but I don't think that's gonna happen with this model. So I'm just gonna have to do it, kind of eyeball it because it is a boundary rep. Any, anytime you're using a mesh infusion, it kind of becomes a little bit of an eyeballing activity. 
trying to get to look about right. I think 800 was actually too big. Definitely was too big. It's not terrible, but it's just a bit too large. So I'm going to do that, but then I'm going to go back and scale again. So scale. I think it's under my modify. I might have to do this again in a second. We will see if I'm doing this the right way because I don't like working with meshes, but they are pretty important to work with periodically. Say good evening. My print fish, how long do you plan on streaming? Yep, till late. So about another hour ish. I go like 0.98. So right now I'm just trying to make this line up size wise. We're getting closer here. I look from straight down, we can see that this edge is almost matching. This edge is still a little too large, so maybe a little smaller. For about 93, so that edge is touching, that edge is touching, that's about what we want. We'll try 93. And once again, I'm gonna have to move this over just a touch. So this is right on the edge. That's right on the edge. And then the bottom, we want to be also right on the edge of the module, right there. Okay. And that looks about right. If I bring back up this image, you can see it, yep, there it is. Kind of doesn't fill in the whole boundary. It looks like there's a whole little piece that goes around it. Um, which is a little annoying because it means that the design doesn't match up quite as well as the ones we've had before. So all the ones we've had in the past, because of this kind of unique shape they have, they have an almost consistent boundary around the edge, whereas this one definitely does not. But this will get us very close. And what I may do is I may actually model it once here and then copy that design over. But I think we are ready. So this looks about right to me. Um, the only thing that is not correct now is the height. So if I turn on the body silver, we can see that this height doesn't match up with what we have here. Um, which we want that to match. So the, other, the last thing I'm going to do is do one more move. Turn off this body temporarily. Oh, we do want that. I'm going to move this up until it's in alignment with this silver one. So I'm going to look directly from the left. We're going to move this up till about there would like to get this a little closer than that, so it looks like it's probably more like 5.5. That's very close. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, this is say a saved value, so I can move it over here. And look right, get right up on it, and look at basically how this is intersecting. Get it very close. I think that's actually probably close enough back. That's too far. Right there. And this should be close enough for the purpose of designing it. Because we are going to probably uh, override this a little bit. Hey, are you doing needy module set or salary than the others? Um, so that's actually a good question. Uh, because needy modules are a two-piece module compared to the normal one. Um, based on what I see here, so if you look at, like, this is just ever so slightly above the surface of this mesh, like the height here. This is ever so slightly above this. This is ever so slightly above the platform here. It looks to me like they are on the same level. So if I move this to just be in contact with that surface, uh, negative, 
0.5. Somewhere around here. You can see it's fighting a little bit with the Z. It looks like while the top part of them is raised, the actual flat is roughly the same height. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it is very close to the same height. And I'm just going off of how it, these game models are set up. Most likely in the game, they're at a slightly different height. Um, in fact, let's verify that. I'm going to bring up the game <laughs> just to double check because I, I would like to be sure here before we do a lot of work modeling it. Uh, and actually, before anything else goes further, I'm actually going to hop back here and I'm going to save this. Best not to have a computer crash, uh, get rid of it like almost did a minute ago. So what I should be able to do here, I'm trying to, I don't know if I remember the uh, command for it, but there is a, I do have a mod installed that should allow me to uh, free move my camera to get a better look. Yep. Yeah, basically we're doing the game equivalent of measure twice, cut once. If this works. So I do need to remember what my free cam... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I, I can free cam right now. So I'm going to set something up. Uh, in fact, I might even want to do a custom scenario for this. I'm going to go to... Don't know why my buttons aren't here. Uh, here we go. I believe it is. There should be buttons here. I don't know why they're not. There we go. No, wait, these are still part of that. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. There should be a second page. Uh, so I guess we will just make it do it via custom. So I'm going to turn on needy. Uh, I'm going to make sure there's at least three modules, give us lots of time, and go. And that's maybe not the best, okay, this isn't the best scenario. So I'm going to, uh, too good at this game. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna retry until I get something that has a desirable layout for figuring out what's going on. Still not the best one. I'm actually going to return and turn on a few more. Maybe on. I'm gonna put more modules on it. Good enough. By the way, that's the case I was talking about earlier. Uh, the one spot where that custom module is used. Let's see. We still got knobs. Um, really not a good module for seeing this. Uh, we'll have to do a stream of actually playing the game. We really need to. Uh, I'm not sure. It's kind of more of a VR stream, but I think those are only done on Fridays with actual gameplay. So probably have to be on a Friday. Okay, this is a, this is a module that works fairly well for seeing this. So what I'm curious about is if I go here and then start... I move in a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can remember what the keys are for uh, doing things in here. Okay. Kind of just scoot inside a little bit. Um, okay, not the best perspective, but it looks like it is the same height. Roughly, I'm gonna let's see if I can get a better perspective. Perspective from this side, maybe. Uh, the button's kind of in the way. Um, 
Let me. I'm just gonna get one more so we can. I want a really clear view. The button is a really bad one to have next to that uh, for seeing what's going on. <laughs> Oh, that's not a good module for this. Okay, let's uh, try again. <laughs> Getting to see a little bit of the uh, long periods of time I've spent doing things like this, where I just restart the game until I get the scenario I want um, for some specific test. Uh, this should be, yeah, this, this will be fine. So I'm gonna try to move really close so we can try to get an idea of if they are the same height. And it really does look to me like they are about the same height. Um, it's kind of annoying because we're kind of clipping inside as we're trying to look at it. But if we look at where that's positioned versus where this is positioned, it does look like they are the exact same height or at least very, very close to it. This is taller than that surface there. Um, so there might be a very subtle height difference between the two, um, as in this might be ever so slightly lower than this, but it's very, very small if there is one. And this is also an opportunity to look, yeah, so they have a, what is different between this module so you can see around the edge here, there's just black kind of going back into the design. You can almost see into it a little bit. On this one, there's like a, uh, a dark blue piece here to some degree. And of course, you can also see this is a game model, so things aren't always... Oh, that's interesting. So while this curves back right there, this little bit here, which I think is just on the left edge of what you can see, actually kind of goes straight back in at an angle. Uh, yeah, I can't really tell either. It's very, very close if there is a difference. Um, and I can't really tell. It, it, it's at least small enough where if I make them the same, I don't think it's going to be something where people are going to be able to notice that difference. Um, what I can do is I think if I can kind of position myself by wiggling a bit to be right above it and look right down on it uh, yeah they really look like the same height to me um, that that blue piece does not look like it's significantly hot taller than the uh, gray pieces and same with the it looks like it might be the platform is ever so slightly lower from this perspective like um, I know, what What do you guys think? Does this look... Uh, okay, maybe, I think it is slightly lower, now that I'm looking at like this. You can see where that cutoff line is. Uh, I think that, yeah, the, the module is ever so slightly inset. But it is very slight, maybe only a couple of millimeters. Um, so, we could reflect that or we could make it standard. Um, I think what this means is I'm going to base it off of that and make it about a millimeter thinner. So we'll go with that. <laughs> so in fusion, I think what that would mean in this circumstance is that this would be ever so slightly lower um, compared to, so if we bring that, uh, so as an example, if we actually bring in the uh, original module background, you can see right now they're at basically the same height uh, well, actually, not quite. Um, actually, I think we're in about the right spot there. Um, given the height difference here, looks about the same as in game. What I can see though is that it does look like we're slightly too small. As you can see this doesn't quite meet that edge like the other one does. So I am going to uh, make this ever so slightly bigger again. So I'm going to do one more scale.
this will probably only be like a single percent scale difference. Um, can I get yeah, that one? Point right there. Oh, am I not getting a? Hmm, why is it selecting over there? That's not where I want it to scale from. I might not have a choice in this case. Yeah, it looks like it's just picking kind of an arbitrary point down there. I click here, yeah, it doesn't do anything different, so... Hmm... Why is there a point down there? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, it'll work. Okay. Um, so I think we just need to go up like 1%. I go up 1%. Yeah, I think that's about right. I'm going to have to just touch, move it the tiniest bit over to match. Because it is sticking off this edge just ever so slightly. Looks like I'm probably going to be going about negative 0.5. Or is that too much? Mm, too much. Two? Yeah, about there. And then I'm going to move it slightly down. Probably also a negative point something. And so what I, all I'm doing here is I'm literally just eyeballing the position to get it roughly where it should be in game. There we go. So I think we basically know our position now. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to turn back on capturing design history. And so you can see what it's done. So that's gotten rid of everything in our feature list. So we can't edit any of this stuff anymore, which is a problem. Um, and is not good. So... What I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to draw out this sketch in reference to this surface and then I'm going to go to a different copy of it and make a cut like basically redraw the dimensions I've made. But now we'll have that editing history back again. And so basically what I want to do is I want to use this as a, as a measuring reference for when I'm doing the other model. Um, so in fact, I think we can actually do that without having to, we can just create a new document off the side here. So I'm going to create a copy of this module right here. And let's see, let me make another copy of it. Copy. Okay. And so this is a bit of a janky approach to doing this, but I think it'll actually come out better. Um, give it a moment. Yeah. So from this, I'm going to, so one thing I'm going to bring back this body temporarily so I can see it and use it as a reference. But our goal is to create the sketch that will make up the other one. So this is touching. Um, I'm going to create a sketch on the ground plane where we originally started. And so we have this, the body silver, this original one. And we know that these tabs are pretty much going to be the same on this new module. But not much else is probably going to be the same. So, over here, we got to do some measurements. Um, so I'm going to make a sketch. I'm going to hide everything except this. Well, actually, I do want to keep that for a moment sketch here and then I can hide it. 
So we have a, you can see kind of our bounding box. In fact, I'm going to reinforce that bounding box really quick by bringing this back, doing a projection, projecting that outer, outer geometry in, and hiding. So this is basically what I would work with when I started out. Um, I bring in the game model into the CAD. I'm going to make this more visible so I can see what I'm doing. We'll just use paper. There we go. And within this sketch, come on, do want to sketch? Uh, why can I? Why not? Can I have editing history on? I do. There we go. So now I've basically got this module in the sketch uh, so I can measure the geometry on it. Um, and so one thing we can see here is that there's a lot of chamfers going on in this module compared to the others. This has really heavily beveled edges. So they, they really kind of curve in. And, and I really mean, and in this case, it really, really does mean curve. They, they do actually curve. So we probably want to get the general face surface, but then from there, we're going to have to work on the curves. So the little nubs themselves are roughly, I'm going to draw little rectangles to represent them, roughly like that. And if these are, if we assume these are centered, which I think we can, uh, we are going to add a center mark right there, this, and we want to add a center mark for the actual outer edge. So I'm just going to do over here because it's easier to find it there. Uh, where is that center mark? I think it should be about here. Right there. So this and this should be horizontal. So you can see we're pretty close to centered. Uh, it's ever so slightly off, but that's how it is with almost everything in a game model. So we're just trying to get as close as we can. We'll determine a dimension from it. So in this case, that looks like 36. And we can kind of confirm dimensions as we go. 6.8. Hmm. Uh, let's see what that dimension is in the other one. So if I bring up the this one here, and if I measure that dimension, so I use measure from here to here, we have this be 7.5 on the other one. It's only seven here. So we're probably gonna have to take some, I guess we'll call them artistic liberties uh, with that. <laughs> and make that a little thicker so it matches up with the rest of the design. I don't think that's a problem. It actually kind of works for this module, but we're probably gonna make ours 7.5. And yeah, that, that really doesn't affect the design too much. It, it looks about the same. So we have that, so that's our little rectangle. Um, we can make that same rectangle on the bottom because we know it's the same. Draw a rectangle here, make a point in the middle, make a point in the middle of this, 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 horizontal vertical, and then just dimension it to match. So this should be 36, and this should be 7.5. There we go. And those little chamfered edges we can add later. So that's definitely a start. I'm also going to Draw a construction line through the middle, that, and mirror it. So there we go. We got our three little knob things on the edges. Save that. Next up, uh, so the outer surface of this is there's basically like a few different planes that are absolute. So there's the surface that we actually have our module on right here that has these little chamfers on uh, edges on the bottom. Uh, that is a, I do not want to use a uh, construction one there. I want to use a real one. 
So we have kind of our center uh, rectangle, which is, I don't know why this is blue, it makes it impossible to see. Um, <laughs> looks like it's about that tall, and sorry, you probably can't really see what I'm doing here, um, given, I don't know why this happens, but it kind of just does. It does not want to let me make that lower. I'm not sure why. Oh, it's locked in somehow. What, what is it connected to? Um, something has connected to something. Is that it? There we go. So, I think we're about right. Uh, so I'm going to dimension this. So from here to here is roughly 81.2. So let's try 82 and see what that looks like. That looks okay. And I know this isn't very visible. Um, if I toggle this on and off, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely, this in general, fusion is not a terribly, it's not very good at making things easy to see as soon as there's models on screen. They kind of all just merge together. Um, but I think we're pretty close there. And then when it comes to the, uh, where, where to go? There it is. When it comes to the actual width of this, I think we're also very close. Uh, 128.4. Let me make this 128. What does it look like? Uh, that actually looks a little too small. Although 129 is not a fun number. Um, it's not a, not a fun number. Uh, 128 is so, so much nicer as a number. I think, we'll, I think we're going to make it 128 just to make it a nice number. Um, <laughs> So you can see now we have a, we're, we're getting close to having the most of it. Um, now something I notice here, and this is, it's not perfect, but I'm curious if it was intended, is that this seam here is really close to matching up with that seam there. However, I don't think they actually match if I look at it from the perspective here. Yeah, they do not quite match. This is definitely further out than this is. Um, it's very, very close, but it's not a match. So I don't think I don't think that's an intended uh, relationship there. Which means we're kind of just going to place this where it looks right. And what I think is actually the most appropriate way to pick this is this thickness here looks like it's exactly the same as this thickness here. And so I'm going to use that as the reference I'm using. So whatever this distance is here needs to be the same distance here. And so to do that, I'm going to draw a little line. Make a construction. I'm going to go from here to here. And I'm going to go from here to here. I'm going to make these the same. Equal. There we go. We've got that positioned. Uh, it should have turned white. Ah, okay, so something didn't uh, lock, oh, wait. Ah, this didn't lock in. So this did not end up as horizontal. And with that, there we go, we've locked in. So we can still change these dimensions a little bit, uh, but it won't let us change them much. Um, so we kind of so we've got we've got our safe area at the bottom uh, at this point. So we have this rectangle here. Not sure why there's these little cutouts. Oh, that's because the sketch. But we've got that rectangle there. We've got these three rectangles for the. So we've got the the safe area in the middle. We've got the little knobbin looking things. Um, there is this kind of chamfered edge that goes down a bit and then will drop down. And so we'll have to work on that in a moment. Um, 
this is one of the cases of this is a pre actually a fairly complex model made up of multiple pieces, some of which are actually tilted or curved, which makes things much more complicated. Uh, this looks to be a chamfer, but this is not. <laughs> more than fairly complex. Actually, yeah, you're kind of right. This is a, a, a very complex model, especially if you aren't making this using a mesh. They used a mesh to make this. And obviously it's very low resolution, so they're not dealing with the intricacy of the model. If you want something to be geometrically perfect, it gets a little more complicated. I'm actually a little surprised that these lines are even showing up nice and sharp like that, given how curved that is. Um, let's see. How can we further get closer to this model? So it looks like this is actually a straight uh, piece here, this little rectangle. So we can actually work with that. We can add that. So I'm going to hide that. So right about here, we have a direct rectangle. It's right in the middle, right about here. And it's not for construction. And it goes about, about to there. Um, and then we can add dimensions as usual. That's 30. That happens to work out as a nice number. This is 38. I have a feeling these are ah, those are pretty close to the correct numbers. Uh, let us hide that. Yep. And then dimensions here to here is 10. Whatever there's a nice easy numbers like that, I wonder if there's something, if they actually modeled that that way. Because that seems real perfect for that not to be the correct number. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm just seeing, reading into things too much. <laughs> yeah, it's very suspicious. Um, likewise, I think we can get away with a center rectangle here for this inner screen. Somewhere around there. I'm going to make sure I'm looking directly from the top. Ah, and once again, we have one of these cases of it's not actually a perfect... Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, change my view mode to orthographic. Yeah, okay, we're in orthographic. So yeah, it looks like this is actually an imperfect... Uh, yeah, this is not a perfect rectangle uh, screen. It's very close, but it's not perfect. So we're going to have to kind of just get as close as we can. 29.5. Uh, looks like it's that dimension or at least it's very close. Actually does look a little too wide, um, but we are also working on a very small scale here, so maybe 29. Yeah, okay, it's much closer to 29. And then this is probably about 16. It's very close at least. Given that, if I hide that away, we've got our little screen there now. So now it's just that fancy geometry around the edges. What's the size of the digits? I hope they fit. Uh, let's actually double check that real quick, how big these digits are, the real ones. Because, we, yeah, we will have to change that size slightly if they don't fit. Uh, it is 16. So, interestingly enough, they are 19 tall. Uh, but that is the physical size. The actual digits themselves are 14 tall. So the actual digits will just barely fit in this little screen. They'll be right up, uh, there'll be about a millimeter of space. Um, but the actual height fits fine, because they're only 19 tall, whereas this is a full 30 tall. So the digits might be a little tight. We might change the size of this window to make, to make them look a little bigger. Because the the width of this is only 25, uh, 26. So, 29. That's actually very close. Um, might be fine. But yeah, that 16 might change to an 18 down the line. <laughs> um, and what we'll probably do is we'll probably add in a little digit representative there to get an idea of what it would really look like down the line. So we have our main face, we have our little clock thing. 
but we need to figure out this surface here, which is probably the most complicated surface in it. So one thing is this surface is tilted. Uh, and so to me, while this kind of has a curved look to it, I think what this is intending to have the appearance of is a panel up and then a panel that's kind of flat again. So a, a semi-flat, a curve, and actually what we might want to do is represent this by the edge. So look at it from the side here like this and draw that line that it makes up. Um, so I think, hmm, I think we are at a point where we should actually start modeling this for real. Or at least we're very close to it. So I'm going to start doing a little bit of that. But I'm, I'm not going to do this the proper way. I'm going to do this with primitives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little pegs. I'm going to bring them up to the right height, which I do want to check how tall they really should be. So they should measure roughly uh, 12.5 tall. And I believe this face is 10 millimeters off the surface. I'm going to double check that too. Yes, it's 10. So these should measure 12.5, which looks like it's pretty much spot on. And then we want this face to measure 10. But it's a little, so we, we actually need to add a little more detail to this blur sketch. So we have this, this safe face, this, this area that we, are, we know we're right about. Um, this area right here. Thing is, it connects up to this outer area. And so I'm going to create a second rectangle. Uh, and I'm going to be careful about how I create this so that I know it's connected up correctly. But I want, so I want, uh, I'm going to make, okay. So I want this to be collinear with this, this to be collinear with this, this to be collinear with this, and this to be collinear with this. There we go. So from that and that sketch we created, there's so many sketches, I know I am safe to extrude this up by 10 and ignore the weird little circles that are missing. Just fill those in. Oh, that's a tiny little feature there. That. No, <laughs> why are there tiny gaps? And this is why you don't sketch on a face that happens to be perpendicular with another face. Uh, there's weird things like this happen. Okay. So. Uh, we know that we can make bring this up 10 and this is essentially correct uh, but we're missing so one thing I, I need to do here is that extrusion needs to be separated we do that I'm gonna get rid of this extrusion yes so this extrusion here we know it's mostly correct but we also know that there is a oh, We also know that this is not quite like that. We know that there's this surface up here. So if I bring this back in, we know there's this face here that we need to be matching up with. And so given that we have that face, we have to match. Uh, we need to know the distance between these. So in this sketch, if I measure this distance here, it looks like it's 3.5 exactly. Uh, yes, it is 3.5 exactly. So what I can do here is I'm actually going to just chamfer this, this, and this by 3.5. And that's close to what we want. So if we bring back in the body we're trying to create, that's very close. But you'll notice that the chamfer is needing to be chamfered now because of the way these corners are set up. And so now that we've made that chamfer, we now can, and I want to double check the angle here, is 45. 
Yes, the angle is 45. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Um, we're going to chamfer the chamfer like this. Try to get that same corner look. Uh, it looks like it's maybe about that much. Somewhere around here, probably 2.5. And from that, we can see now we have, okay, right. So you can see this corner doesn't quite match up like the other one did. And that's because we actually don't want to do a chamfer of, the, of equal distance. We want to chamfer uh, two distances. And, what? no, wait, why is my, Normally that would have done it. Hmm. Not sure why these aren't matching up. Oh, oh, I know why. It's because it's doing this uh, parallel, whereas we don't want this to be parallel. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're chamfering a chamfer um, to get that just that right corner look, because we want this corner to look a very specific way. Um, and so I think what I actually need to do here is I need to only chamfer this edge in order to create that initial to can be equal distance, but I need to make that zero in order to select something. 2.5. There we go. Need to do that, which looks weird now. Um, and then what I actually need to do is I need to take this up this direction. Um, which I think the actual best way to do this will be to create a new, <laughs> this is going to look real weird. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, within the sketch we made before, so this sketch here, uh, I need that a line here for that. So I need something like that. And 2.5 by 2.5, like that. And so it's going to seem a little weird why I did that. But what I'm actually going to do is instead of chamfering, I'm going to sweep this profile along this path. If it'll let me select the second line here. Um, you unselect the profile, keep selecting the path right there, select profile, that. And so what I've basically created is a, an angled surface here, which isn't quite, I actually need to go further. Um, hmm, how can I ensure I'm going far enough? Let's see. Actually, this would be fine. So if I, if I create that, oh, didn't like that. What did it not like about that? Oh, weird. Oh, oh, of course. Okay, yeah, it created a, uh, an external surface. Um, how can I get rid of this? Can I press pull it? Oh. Okay, I'm trying to do this the easy way. I have a feeling there isn't an easy way to do this, so I'll do it the hard way, fine. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do instead, since there isn't, it seems like there is no easy way for me to get away with uh, doing this, is we're going to chamfer it like we did before. It's really hoping for an easy way. Um, <laughs> and see how what's the best way I can create this effect. Um, so if I chamfer like this, that gets me almost what I need. Hmm. So w the thing is, what I need is I need a plane that is at a very specific spot. Along this. In fact, that, that, that is what I need right there. I'm going to create a plane there. 
and that's just floating there now and now what I can do is if I chamfer where's my chamfer tool uh, come on there it is chamfer this by 2.5 like that what I can now do is I can create a face or I guess I can do this. So there's a few ways I could do this. I'm actually just going to try this. If I do an extrude off this, um, I need a profile for that. Uh, let's see. Let's do a, we'll do it with a cut. So I'm gonna create a offset plane. This plane, extent to object, I'm going to touch that corner. And I'm going to make it. Uh, now I've made two planes. I'm going to hide the first one. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to use this plane to cut this surface. I'm going to do create. Uh, where's my modify? There we go. I'm going to do a split body. This body with this face, oops, come on, this body, this face, cut, and what we should now have is I can do remove, and there we go, way, way over complicated way to get this exact geometry I want, mm -hmm. <laughs> but now we have it, so this is exactly the shape of that uh, piece from the game. Um, there may be an easier way to do that. It's not quite as... A, okay, that actually looks like it's slightly thinner, so let's change that. What I should be able to do is the nice thing is I can go back to this chamfer, change this to 2, and the whole thing updates. Which is that wonderful thing about parametric modeling. Yeah, that's much closer. So we have that edge. We, we can just copy that over. Um, I think, or I'm going to hope it works. So I'm going to try to mirror it. We'll see if this actually works. Mirroring doesn't always work. Um, I do need a view. Where's my origin? There it is. Oh, that's why. Features. Mirror plane. Come on. That one. Features, we want to do all the features we made uh, up until yeah, this through this, if it'll let me. Um, let's see. Okay, let me do those three at least. You're playing that one. Did not like that. <laughs> As expected. Um, okay, we'll just have to do this again. Um, that is fine. In fact, let's actually do this a little bit differently. Rather than doing a remove, we can do this by taking that same plane that we had before. I'm actually going to change this chamfer step to do both of them. Uh, so, zero. for some reason, uh, Fusion does not let you change a chamfer if you have any number put into it. I do not understand why, but that is a rule of Fusion that I have come to deal with. <laughs> so we have a chamfer on both, we have the edge on both sides. I do need to create a second reference plane, so construct, uh, not that, construct plane through an edge, where to go? Uh, plane and angle. There we go. So we've got our two planes. If I open, turn on the other, we've got our two planes here. Bring back our chamfer. And basically, what I need to do is on these planes, I just need to create sketches that have a big circle. Doesn't matter how uh, I can do origin. And as long as they're big enough, it's fine. So I'm just gonna make them 20. 
Finish. And over on the sketch, sketch, add, circle, origin, 20. So we have these circles now that are kind of floating there. What we can do is we can extrude those. We can do extent to object, select that corner, and do cuts. Same thing. This is literally the same thing we were doing ex before, except we're using an extrude instead of a, a split body. Nice thing is, is this is more likely not to not fail down the road. So there we go. Oh goodness, it's already 7:40, and we've barely gotten anything on this model done. So you can kind of see how long this takes. If you really want to exactly copy a model, um, it's an involved process to get every little dimension on something um, <laughs> but we are very close on the actual shape here so what I actually want to do is I want to create this outer area this curve thing from the side um, as I think we can actually describe it better in the side so from here if I turn on this um, well, it would be nice if there's a way to make this like transparent or something, but I do not know of a way to do that easily. So I think we've basically got right here, right about here-ish, and then about there, and then about there. And then as far as the way this goes backward, not quite on point on these. We're, we're, we'll have to mess with their positions just a little bit. So it's more like there. And this one needs to come in just a little bit. Maybe about there. And then we have that kind of curve going down, which I think is actually supposed to look like a curve, given there's two faces here. But... I'm not sure. I'm actually going to make that a line for now. And we'll see if that needs to change to a curve later on. It is significantly different though, so maybe it does need to change. We'll see. Draw a line there for now. So, I think we have a good idea. Um, besides this, for the fact that this is lower than the model here. I think this is roughly the, the right shape. So... What I want to do is I'm going to basically start dimensioning this. Uh, this point should be attached, but it's not because there is no geometry for the test to. So I'm going to do an intersect with that. OK. And then that should connect up to that. There we go. So I'm going to see if, let's see if any of these numbers make sense. This is 5.69. That's not a particularly specific number. I don't think that's actually how we're defining it. Let's see if there's if this number makes more sense. This number maybe is closer. This looks... Let's see what 15 looks like in comparison to the model, if that's too far off. Uh, that's maybe a little far. 14.5? Um, 14.5 is very, very close. So we'll leave it that. And then I have a feeling that this is probably defined by an angle. So 29. So then if we dimension the angles here, which we can do a few different ways. If I define this angle, we get 29, hmm, 1.5 degrees. It's very close to a, a pretty round angle, so I think that might actually be what the intent is. Then if we get this angle, we get 4.38. That's not a particularly relevant sounding angle. Uh, so I actually think this might not be angle based might just be height based. Temporarily turn that off. Height difference here is about 
I'm going to probably make everything a number that sounds better to me because I tend to do that in general. Makes it easier down the line if I need to change things. Um, if these angles are... These numbers make some kind of sense. It makes it a little easier down the line. And... Fifty and the height here seems like a not quite arbitrary but kind of close. So I think that's not too dissimilar from what the actual shape is. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it's also somewhat close. I do think maybe a curve makes sense here, looking at this more. So if we think about this as like a curve coming down, I think that does maybe make it look a little better. Instead of this kind of angle and then angle. And so, let's see what that would look like if I was to actually make this a curve. It would be somewhere on here, and here, and then going down. Kind of look like that. It actually does look quite nice compared to this, so I think I'm going to go with that. So we have a, a nice curved top. Oopsie. Looks like that's 50. So this to here. And that is tangent. So let's see what this looks like. So what I can do here is I can extrude this. Oh, whoops, I need to add more lines. If I finish the profile by basically adding an extra line here, I can extrude this uh, symmetrically. A bit like that. Uh, distance. Ah, uh, right, I, I can't do this symmetrically and have it, so I got two sides uh, to object. This is side A, there. Object side B, there, join. So there's our kind of mock up shape. And let's see how that compares. So I think that's actually not all that bad. The big difference here is that the chamfer is changing over time. That edge is being cut into. So to do that, I think we can actually kind of cheat here and create a sketch on this little edge here, like that, and draw in this shape. That just make sure that this is big enough to cover the entire thing. kind of have that shape we had before, although something I am noticing here is that I believe that this is actually squared. Yeah, so that's square. That is a big difference. Um, so we can't quite do it this way. It's not this easy. So I'm going to undo that. Sadly, the, what looked like the easy solution was not the solution. Um, well, I think we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do this by multiple chamfers to get the chamfer just right. So, hmm, this is going to be a bit of a complex thing because uh, we want this top surface to maintain its appearance at the cost of whatever else it takes down there. 
And so what we would like to do is have this chamfer perfectly intermesh with that chamfer. Um, which might actually happen on its own. That's very specific size, 2, 5. So you can see how this is changing. So as I go from 2, uh, so at 2, we have our, our normal surface. They're separated, right? Uh, let me see if I can find the right, just the right boundary. So I think it's 2, 4, 2, 3. Yeah. So here, this chamfer is over here. This chamfer is over here. They're separate. As soon as I go to 4, this chamfer takes over and cuts off an entire chunk over here, which is not what we want. Um, so what we need to do is we need to actually use a chamfer that changes, I believe is what we're going for here. Um, so this isn't really a chamfer anymore. Um, so much as a... Hmm... Okay, I think I see how we can do this. So it's not so much a chamfer as it is an edge. So what I actually need to do is I need to create a plane that is perpendicular to an axis. Um, perpendicular to face at point. Um, let's see, what, what command can I use to make this? Hmm. Plane along, I think plane along path is what we want here. Yeah, there we go. So we have a plane that's along this edge here. So it's actually angled very slightly. Um, I'm gonna just put it on the end. Uh, we'll put it on the on this end. Oops, right there. So we have our point here. So what we need to do is we need to create a sketch on this plane and then we need to project this chamfer into it. So I'm going to use the project tool. I'm going to project this edge into our new edge here. And then I'm going to continue this all the way until it meets the surface we're working on. So this is just going to be really, really far out this way. Um, and I think we can go straight above. Horizontal, vertical, and then vertical down. Make sure that's set to vertical. There we go. So it, this is very similar to what we had before. However, the advantage this time is that this is now in alignment with this edge. So you can see, instead of being straight up and down, this is actually ever so slightly tilted. So it matches this angle here. And so if we extrude this, this shape from, I'm going to go both both directions, so two, two sides. One direction, we want to go two object just to this corner. Yep, right there. And then the other side, we want to go all. Uh, so I'm not doing it. Okay, we'll just go a blind distance and cut all the way out to like 50. So what that should have done, there we go. I do want to double check we have what the geometry should be here. Uh, is that creating a little lump there? Okay, that's creating a little lump. We don't want a little lump there. Um, so I need to change this to, instead of referencing that piece of geometry, instead of this, we want to select right here. No, that adds a sliver. Um, <laughs> hmm. How can I make sure that this is perfect? Uh, so one of these has to be imperfect. I think it's better to have it this way. And so that'll leave a sliver here, which isn't really preferable. But what I think we can do there is we can actually just remove this sliver by creating a plane through three points, here, here, and here, creating a sketch on this plane, 
I think that's all we actually have to do is just create this. Okay, I do need to draw one line. And from this plane, we should be able to do an intersection of this, this, and this. So now we have a face there in a sketch. And we should be able to extrude. Uh, I'm going to have to hide the body for a second. Extrude this sliver straight out <laughs> and get rid of that little bit there. I'm going to just do five. There we go. So as far as it's visibly is concerned, I think we now have a perfect piece of geometry. So from this face here, this looks like a perfect rectangle. This looks like a perfect rectangle and this curve doesn't look weird. <laughs> um, this still looks a little weird. This curve looks a little weird, but I think we can basically get rid of that by chamfering this edge. Like that looks weird um, because curves, curves on curves look weird unless they are reduced away. Oh, that looks real weird. That's fun. Uh, that's not what we want though. So it might actually be beneficial to have this angle. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to want to angle this. And I think this angle, so that spot where it breaks in two from before, um, on that on the original piece, it looks like that piece is kind of, kind, yeah, it's kind of in a similar spot to where that edge is. And so we might want to try to match that but it looks like we might have to pick this up next stream or I might just have it done next stream. That might happen, we'll see. <laughs> but I think we're kind of getting at the geometry there or at least recreating something close to it. Um, it's definitely weird. Like the geometry here is definitely weird. And so getting it to match exactly is an interesting task because you want this to still look right. <laughs> um, let's see, what, what else could we do to make this? Just chamfering it might do it. Ah, it still makes it look weird because that curve. Hmm. Yeah, I think this probably is gonna have to become an angled surface to look correct because a cur curves and lines meeting each other look weird from specific angles. So like this looks fine, but then you move to like around here, looks weird because this curve, both of these are kind of look concave, even though this is a, a straight curve. Um, it makes this look curved. This is not curved, but it makes it look curved. <laughs> um, and that's confusing to the eye, which is not generally a thing you want in your designs. You generally want it to look correct. So, yeah, might might change that. But I think we're definitely on our way toward a good-looking version of this. Not there yet, but we're on our way toward it. <laughs> so, it sadly is 8 o'clock. I have to end the stream. Um, can't stay here all night. <laughs> Uh, but I hope this was enjoyable, just seeing how, at least my process for trying to recreate a game model in a CAD style workspace. Um, it's definitely a different environment if you've used a lot of uh, non-CAD workspaces. Um, I think I am going to really quick just see, I'm going to just see if I can mirror this. It may let me, it may not. I'm going to try once. Um, features. So everything from let's see, where, where's the point where these match again? Is it here? Nope, okay, so past this extrude this extrude, yeah, okay, right there. So from there here here go oh, right features here to here near select there uh, we'll see if adjust works okay we were uh, we we're already able to mirror it so yeah I think that looks close but it's definitely still not 
quite right yet. I think we definitely need to do a little more work to get that shape just right. But I think that is definitely a start. It definitely looks close to it. Um, and that's half the battle. So, <laughs> hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to go ahead and save that progress, just in case. And uh, Andrew will be streaming tomorrow night um, with something in the makerspace proper, uh, I believe. So, I will be back next week on Tuesday and probably Wednesday. So we might pick this back up. We'll see if I've made progress by then. Um, so yeah, have a good night, everyone. And yeah, have a good night. Uh, don't forget to be awesome, as they say. <laughs> and hope you all enjoyed.